Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the court of the EDO. Jester, how is everyone? Christmas is now barreling down the gun. Straight at us. <laughs> oh, the horror. Right. So, you know, apart from thank you very, very much and all the other related paraphernalia, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Brain Twat and Father Christmas coming down the chimney. There's something really important that is floating around in the ether and is going to be an ongoing conversational topic, I imagine, for the next few months. And that is the, the government guidance for schools, which I'm, as I know many of you are, deeply, deeply concerned about um, for a number of reasons. But we've got, I've got something today, and I think there'll be more coming out shortly, so you'll get more from me on this, uh, about this situation. But I think it's important to note that this is going out for public consultation, I understand. So they'll put out the guidance and go, right, tell us what you think. At which point it's really important you tell them what you think. Right, as an individual. It's very, very important that you do so once that starts, that process starts. I was at the LGBT Alliance conference, um, as some of you know, because I met you there. And the one thing that was said by one of the politicians at the conference was, they don't hear enough from us. It is absolutely, you know, there's, I think, Two and a half thousand, three thousand people that watch me Witter on every day out of four and a half thousand subscribers I've got. Every single one of you needs to write. Every single one of you. That's how that's how this will happen. Is every single one of one of you needs to write to to add to the consultation on the guidance for trans nonsense in schools. Um, and I think that's uh, that's going to be something really important as we move forward today. Okay. So um, this is from CanSG.org, who's uh, byline is uh, first do no harm noni nos heri you know the very much the hippocratic oath doctors take and the article is entitled what is social transition and why it is important it's in the dubris for you dr jane martin discusses the uk government's promise to issue guidance for teachers on supporting children dealing with gender identity issues she explains the complex issue of social transition which is increasingly prevalent in children today this shift can lead to more invasive and irreversible medical decisions later on she criticises educational materials endorsing gender ideology, stating they could capitalise on the younger, child, younger children's suggestibility and difficulty discerning reality from fantasy. I call that predatory, by the way. She highlights concerns about the potential for social pressure and suggests that the process of persuasion towards social transition amounts to grooming and child exploitation. OK, so that's that's what Dr. Jane Martin is discussing in this article. The UK government has promised to issue guidance for teachers on how to support children in schools who present with distress or discomfort around their gender identity or who express wishes to be treated as though they were the opposite sex, transgender, or as not belonging to any sex, non-binary. OK, first, first paragraph over and done with. Uh, that's exactly what it is they're trying to do. Um, teachers are, 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 are split as in their core head teacher, what do we do, head teachers say? What do we do? What are we supposed to be saying? We don't know yet. So this is why the government's so important. But there is also a, 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 a section of the teacher, teaching staff who are full-on activists. And these full-on activists must be identified, sacked and banned from the profession. Um, so here we go. So that process has just been discussed there, of being treated as if one is the opposite sex or not, not of any sex. This refers to a process that's come to be abbreviated as social transition. Where a child is said to be affirmed in her or his preferred gender identity. Social transitions clinical importance is that it is the start of a process. It may make it more likely that the child does make it more likely, not may. Make it more likely that the child will continue on a pathway towards more invasive and medical and surgical procedures to alter the sex body. These may result in sterility and other irreversible consequences to which a child does not yet have the cognitive maturity or life experience to give informed consent. The interim report of the Cash Review of Gender Services for Children states social transition. This may not be thought of as an intervention or treatment because it is not something that happens within health services. However... It is important to view it as an active intervention because it may have significant effects on the child or young person in terms of their psychological functioning. There are different views on the benefits versus the harms of early social transition. Whatever position one takes, it is important to acknowledge that it is not a neutral act and better information is needed about outcomes. Now, K 
CAS operating in the review and operating within the confines of the review that CAS has been asked to do, that's perfect, right? It ain't for me. Make no bones about it. If adults around a child start lying and saying that lying is okay to please the child, it will not end well. It will not end well. It doesn't end well for the children that are forced to comply to the lie. It doesn't end well for the child that's been lied to. And it doesn't end well for the school in which the child resides. And it doesn't end well for society if that child decides to go ahead, mutilate their body <clears throat> and become an NHS dependent for years. For life. <coughs> but within the, within the cast review, this is where we're at. Surgical interventions to change their sex bodies are currently prohibited for young people under the age of 18 in the UK. And controversial medical inter interventions such as the use of hormones in younger children are coming under sc scrutiny, increasing scrutiny. But social transition does occur in this age range, and it is, as Cass observes, an active, non-neutral intervention, which may have significant effects on children and whose processes and clinically relevant outcomes need to be better understood. And then the title is Definitions. What are we talking about? Descriptors of social transition tend to differ according to the perspective or position taken by those defining it. The common, they commonly describe certain behaviours and social roles which are connected with being female, male, or according to some definitions, neither sex, as in non-binary. These social roles and behaviours vary to a greater or lesser extent according to their societal, cultural and historical context. Most of the focus of interest relevant to the debates around sex and gender has been on the USA, the rest of the Anglophone world and some parts of Europe. The relevant social roles tend to be described in terms of the kinds associated, associated, of associations that a decade ago would have, been, would have been understood as societal stereotypes themselves, modes of dress or behaviour stereotypically regarded as feminine or masculine in a given culture. So within our culture, there was that idea of feminine and masculine. What this, what this gender identity crap does is solidifies that. You are, what you, you are what you look like, rather than what you actually are, what you appear to be, or how you behave, rather than what you actually are in terms of your sex. So it, it reinforces social, very strong social stereotypes, which we, we, were, we were doing very well at resisting up until about 2004. The concept of social transition also requires attention to the related concept of gender identity, and, and how this is understood, which itself may vary according um, to the source. However, this association is often taken for granted as being unnecessary to expand on, as here. A full social transition may help children feel that their gender identity is accepted, interact more confidently with peers, feel more securely a part of their social groupings, experience less anxiety in facing new situations and new people. Well, from my perspective, I don't care. Gender identity doesn't exist. It is a lie. It is Cartesian dualism in a new box. It is nonsense of the first order and children should be told it is such. That should be an educational thing. So I'm going to leave it there because there's some very good material in this particular article. Oh, it, yeah, you know where it is. Um, buy me a coffee if you can help. That'd be great. Become a subscriber. Become a gestrite. Come and join us or subscribe to my Substack. There are numerous ways that you can now support me. Uh, remember, I think it's going out to uh, consultation. So don't Let's not panic. Let's not you know, worry, worry too much at the moment because we can have a consultation with it. Um, but only the total eradication of these ridiculous ideas from the school system is acceptable. And I'm very interested to hear what you think about that. Is it for you totally unacceptable that the lie of gender identity and the lie of trans should even get a look in at school as anything other than a cult belief system that must be eradicated? So I'll wait to hear from you on that in the comments. I'm sure you'll tell me as you always do. I'll see you later, folks. Goodbye.